Getting drafted by a major league ball club directly out of high school is every baseball player's dream. For pitcher Jeremy Affelt, it was reality. Baseball was something that I was kind of always naturally good at. I liked hitting, I liked pitching, I liked playing the outfield, I liked playing first base. I mean, I just liked the whole aspect of, of baseball. Climbing through the Kansas City Royals farm system as a pitcher, it didn't take long before Jeremy got the call to the majors. I got to the big leagues at a real young age, 22. They wanted me to be in AAA starting, getting some more experience, but they didn't have a choice. I threw so well in spring, and they were trying to kind of go with the youth movement, and so they wanted me to learn at the big league level. Kansas City proved to be too much too soon for the young left-hander, and the frustration of injuries and a losing season ushered Jeremy back to a familiar emotion. I was angry because we lost all the time. I was angry because I didn't know if I was gonna be a starter or a reliever, and I just had no idea who I was in baseball, and it got to a point where I wanted to quit. The last time he experienced such anger was years earlier at his Spokane Washington High School. The son of a career military man, Jeremy was upset to attend yet another new school. My high school years uh, up to my senior year were, were very difficult when it came to authority issues. All the pent up anger just exploded bloated and I became very rebellious. When I would do something in rage, everybody would turn their attention to me. My voice raised, I got loud, and then people heard me. And it was a control issue. I wanted to control the situation, and I could. It's why I enjoyed sports, because I could get my anger out. Jeremy's hot-headedness eventually threatened his playing time on his Christian school's basketball team. So he began to get serious about his relationship with Jesus. I more started studying the Bible because I was scared to not play basketball. And I remember the Bible coming alive for me and reading scripture and understanding what it meant and, and, and just seeing Jesus become alive. And part of the reason was he, what, that he died was because he knew that Jeremy in 2,000 years was going to be a rebellious teenage kid. And he loved me enough to die for me. I'm moving on. That high school transformation and a devoted wife helped Jeremy find the strength to pull through his Kansas City blues. I remember sitting on my counter crying like to, to Larissa, and I was like, I, honey, I just, I don't want to play anymore. I just told him it's not an option. Like, it's already written. Like, the story's already written. Like, we're going to push through this. I know it's tough, but we're going to be fine, and we will get there, and it, it'll be OK. Right now is hard, but it's not going to be like this forever. <laughs> And I remember at that point praying. I said, God, if you still want me in this game, then you got to trade me. At the midseason trade deadline, Jeremy got a fresh start in Colorado. I remember telling my wife that I got traded Colorado and the excitement we felt just for a new start. It just made sense that that's where we were meant to be going. In 2007, I was praying before the season and I said, God, you've given me another year to play. I need a reason to be a baseball player because if all it is is to go out in front of 50,000 people and be cheered or booed based on how you do that day, there wasn't a lot of fulfillment in succeeding on the field if that's all I was doing it for. Then Jeremy teamed up with an old friend from Kansas City to start a ministry to feed the hungry. And I remember he told me the game plan. And I was like, Mike, I'm in. And right now, I can't do much. I'll financially back you because I need to have a reason to keep playing this game. And the finances are pretty good, uh, but it's still a shallow game for me if I don't have a reason to do it. And I remember I got to help start this uh, food initiative and it, did, it was doing well and I was finally pitching for a purpose. There's a reason I'm on that field. That brought joy on the field for me. And I had the best year I've had. It was my best year ever. Went to the World Series, first time the Colorado went, first time I've been to the World Series. I was on cloud nine, baseball was awesome again. I actually enjoyed playing the game. I enjoyed going to the park every day. Since coming to the San Francisco Giants in 2009, Jeremy has been part of two World Series championship teams, but he has remained grounded and focused on why God has him in the game. I truly believe that I have been given this platform for a reason, and it's not for seven homes, and 10 cars, and, and, and so much money, I, I just don't know what else to do with it, but just spend it on myself. I believe he's given this money because I believe he's asking me to establish his covenant. And so for me, the gospel is the good news. 
we've always known baseball is just the tool, the catalyst, the platform for something bigger, something else. And in the midst of, of life, of having babies, having kids, playing baseball, the crazy schedule, you know, we've always kept our focus that there is a big plan. God has a plan. This is where we're meant to be now, but there's somewhere we're going. I do believe when you do Matthew 25, in which I stand on, that when you feed the least of these, when you clothe the least of these, when you give water to the least of these, when you house the least of these, when you visit the least of these in prison, you're visiting, clothing, housing, feeding, giving water to Jesus himself. That's what I've been asked to do, is love my neighbor as myself.